Flutter, uh, there are two, three couple packages that we need to install first called HTTP because we need to make the API call the equitable uh, just to matching that between two objects connectivity plus uh, or there is a only connectivity to uh, check the network data if there is a connection data or not and then show preferences the main package that we are going to use in this tutorial uh, it's mainly that making more efficient uh, way to have a wrapper around uh, caching data where we can actually um, have the ability to cache any uh, uh, any api call so start by first by the main dart uh, i guess so i have only one home screen and in that home screen, uh, we are getting the, well, I, I won't get to this all. Uh, I will just show you the design itself. Uh, what we have is that uh, we have one scaffold where we have the upper, and then we also, we have the show all button, which is a set state to show all the to-dos, uh, the done one or not. So we have here, if we click here, you have the done one. And then uh, the rest is mainly why when you say uh, we have the to-dos that is actually getting from the repo. Uh, it's a future uh, type, so we can use the future builder and wait for the to-dos. And whenever it's there, the connection is waiting, then we show some progress. Otherwise, we are going to show the to-dos and it will be filtered up to the state that is coming from this button. And what happened here is that we just build the to-dos to show whatever the data from there. We start, uh, maybe let's, uh, let's just go back to the, the to-dos repo. So to-dos repo is an actually is, an, um, is a class where we need to uh, pass the HTTP wrapper, connectivity result, and the uh, URI. So in such a case, this actually can be reused everywhere and then uh, we can always pass the URI and then uh, you can always customize it more but uh, you pass the connectivity to it you pass the HTTP, HTTP wrapper which can be used there uh, and then um, it will take care of uh, do you want to cache it or not so normally uh, it's here when you say get to do or you say uh, anything, maybe get post or something, you pass the cache key. So this is actually where it, uh, it will save this in the storage. And then, and you say, if this a cache enabled, so do you want this API call to always be cached or uh, you want it just to, uh, just let's say normal API call without caching. So here you pass enable cache to it, which is an option that you can pass to the get to do's. Now, this can be improved indeed. You can put this one in the repo itself by creating the constructor. But for me, I found it like this easy. If we go back where we said define our to-do repo, uh, I will start by the HTTP wrapper. And HTTP wrapper is expecting the shared cache data. So, so we are making a constructor where, where we expecting uh, cache data that we the class the, uh, that we will enter uh, will see there. Um, so yeah, let's start from here. So we have a class where we can uh, always use um, the data of it because uh, it's not only can be for the cache. It's uh, I mean it's for the cache, but it's not only can be used for uh, the calls. So first we get the share preferences and then we have the set cache data. The data will come as a string and then we have the expiration uh, dates. And what we do is actually we just set uh, the, uh, the data with this uh, cache key and here uh, we put the uh, and that cache key can be get the keys that you can define here. So I have keys where I can define the cache key here. So normally uh, you put your cache key and then uh, you can change it later. So we have uh, here, we only set the data, we set uh, the cache key to set the data and then we put the expiration date, which is actually, uh, it can be taken from this. So it will be extending the keys itself by with the expiration key. 
and then it will uh, we set the time as an ISO uh, stream now when we need to get the data it will be mainly picking the key itself and then uh, you can pause the key here and then uh, we pause uh, we just send the data and then in the end uh, we it's, we just make sure if the expiration is not is not after then we will return it if it's after then we know that the data is expired so we need to uh, clear the cache here and for the clearing the cache is mainly using the share preference to remove all the keys and normally that key and also the expiration key of it so in such a case we have kind of like storage where we need to manage the cache around shared preference uh, share preference as we know it, it um, uh, HTTP wrapper as we know it uses the share preference to access it so and set, uh, what we need to do is fetching data and in fetch data we send the URI and then we say like enable cache and here we just uh, say the client and he, the client is actually the HTTP um, HTTP uh, package where we say get the URI that is will be parsed from here and whenever we have uh, 200 and then we enable the cache then we ask to the shared cache data to set the cache to it with the response that coming from the API with the duration so uh, this will be enough to the duration it is actually the, uh, the expiration time so this is the we put uh, if you can put this here so it will accept the duration as expiration duration okay and in the end we return the response but uh, normally in the HTTP wrapper we have only one method which is fetch data it will return us to a string because the response body is not parsed yet so this is the parsing data it will be in another place so if I go for example to the model here we have a class uh, to do and here we will use the executable uh, package it's mainly that's a constructor model we, where we need to extract the data from the object that is coming as a string so we have for example from map to map from JSON all of that the encoding so I don't think it's it's a big deal here if I go to for example uh, so this is HTTP wrapper share it then we have the repo the repo itself it will use the HTTP wrapper so we can use the the function or the method fetch data the connectivity result uh, we cannot well you can use the connectivity result here as a subject uh, we need it to be rendered every time so uh, I think it will be best to pass it from the uh, widget itself and then we have the URI stream and in the in the beginning what we will do for example here we have only one method which is get to do's we send the cache key we send the enable cache and uh, what it will try to do it will check the connectivity first if it is none which means it's offline then we get uh, we try to get this from the cache data so we will use the HTT wrapper and then access the cache data instance there and then we get the cache data with this key um, and then we convert it and mainly this conversion is just a method to use some um, JSON decoder around the string itself now if the connection is already there then what we try to do is uh, make the API call so normal normal API call we send the URI but here we send the choice that from the user because the user is given already the choice for enabling the cache or not so we send the choice back to it and this will take care of do we need to store it in the cache or not uh, or just make it an API call so this is why we send uh, we pass the choice to another uh, method and in the end we just convert the response that's coming from there uh, I made another method but I didn't use it but you can also make normal call where you say HTTP wrapper fetch data with the URI so in such a case we don't pass any options and we just convert the data and that's why when I say it to do uh, for example this repo uh, can be also reused but then you need to make it more generic for example uh, pass the um, generic 
type here instead of to do and you can make it just a repo pass the generic type and then convert it to that uh, type so that's mainly it so what we do here in the main uh, first we try to uh, check the connectivity so here we check the connectivity first uh, and then we listen to the, the connectivity itself and then we update the connection state which is actually setting a state to the result we have to, we have two variables one is called the connectivity itself the connectivity result which is actually set it to none right now and here we uh, we just need to listen to the on connectivity change and every time we update the connection or we update the state now with that uh, I think mainly it so every time the connection is changed then uh, we update we, we update this um, we update the, the list so for example now we have this all let me try to get this so if I try to get this and then you see the data is refreshed again and then you still see that um, uh, the cache data it's even that it is still cached that you have set state uh, to this so let me like this one I will just try to put this and then refresh you see uh, this is all cache data so that's mainly for flutter so now what we have learned is the, how to cache the data uh, the cache the API calls uh, data let me know please and share your opinion regarding what do you think about this and if you want to hear more videos about uh, caching in react native or flutter itself and in the end don't forget to subscribe and share and thank you for watching and see you next time